Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of our deep dive webinars. My name is Savannah, and I am part of the customer success team here at Sendable. I am glad that you guys are joining us. We are going to be chatting about how you can use content pillars to scale your content creation workflow. That's a lot of words, but uh, we, Pete and I will be joined by Ellie from our marketing team so she can chat about that and uh, just some housekeeping tips before we get started. Uh, right on the right hand side of your screen, we have the chat box. Marcus has just said hello. You, to the right of the chat box, we also have the questions tab. Now, we do love to keep the questions con uh, consistent to the theme just to ensure that we uh, can make sure we get to everybody and that everybody is taken care of. If you have any questions that aren't related to the theme, feel free to shoot us an email at success at sendable.com and we will be happy to reach out. Uh, if you've joined us before, you know that we like to start these things off with an icebreaker. So my icebreaker is if you were to binge any show right now, what would you be binging? So I am always on a friend's kick, literally always, always want to watch friends, but I need some new TV shows. So pass along your best bingeable shows. Sarah, Game of Thrones or Friends, The Office, also consistent for me as well. Ooh, I still haven't watched Shit's Creek, so that's on the list. Marcus, American Horror Story. Nice. Seems uh, consistent on theme with the month, right? <laughs> awesome. When calls the heart. Okay. Ooh, great British baking show. I am definitely all about that. I, I think it comes out in the UK on Thursdays, but it comes out on Netflix in the US on Fridays. So I have a standing date with my best friend to watch British baking show every Friday. <laughs> awesome. One second. We just have... Uh, some having some technical difficulties. Just one moment. Sorry about this, guys. Normal service will be resumed as soon as possible. In the meanwhile, here's some music for you. Da, 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 da. Um, what the problem is is um, we've got a number of logins for the platform that we're hosting, um, and there's just been a little bit of confusion about who should be logged into what account, essentially. Um, so do apologize about this. Um, I, always, I always find it fascinating that the British baking show is actually the Great British Bake Off, but for some reason, for American audiences, it's been renamed as the British Baking Show when both versions of the word work exactly the same. So I don't understand why they renamed it. It's a bit strange. Um, ooh, Adele. Do you know? Ooh, no. I thought Adele was typing to tell us why that was. And of course, the advantage being in the UK, like I am, is that I'm actually a week ahead of you guys. So I know what's going to happen. A, week, a whole week ahead? I thought you were just a day ahead. No, I believe you guys see basically last week's. Um, Absolutely unfair, truly. Wow. Adele, just going to say we Americans have issues. I, I, I'll take, I'll take what you guys say and just basically take the fifth on that one, Adele, um, because I can't really comment on that one. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, it does look like we're getting there. It looks like um, Ellie, who's our marketing guru is going to be um, with us fairly soon. Um, in the meanwhile, while we're waiting for that, does everyone understand what a content pillar is? Just answer in the chat if you understand or if you've heard of the term of content pillars before. No, Greg? Hi, guys. No can clue? We can hear you, Ellie. Yay! Thank you. Sorry about what? the delay on that. 
No worries. Well, I've just asked to find out um, if anyone knows what content pillars are, and we're getting a lot of nopes, which is awesome because Hi. you can help us understand what content pillars are. Yeah, of course. But before, before you do that, um, one of the questions we had, though, was if you could binge watch any TV series right now, what would it be? We had some interesting answers going on in the chat. Just wondering if uh, you had any responses for that. Um, I just binge watch Squid Game, which I know is controversial because it's horrible. But <laughs> <laughs> so, did, so, did, so did Isabella as well. So there we go. <laughs> I, I, I conversely am actually going down the other route and going down the Hunger Games thing. I just finished the first book this oh, weekend, which is awesome. Oh, so. Nice. <laughs> awesome. <Cool>. Perfect. <laughs> well, now I have a long list of new shows to add and I will get on it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. So Pete and I will jump off and let Ellie do her thing, but just remember guys, if you have any questions for Ellie, drop them in the questions tab or for me and Pete. Cool. Awesome. So I'm just going to share my screen. And I'm going to figure out how to get off stage. Two seconds. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, it's not allowing me to authorize screen sharing. Sorry about this. Um, Oh, one sec. Um, do you want to share? Do you want? Do you want to share yeah. the deck with either myself or Savannah? And we can share our helpful. screens. It might be helpful if you guys share it instead. Something Perfect. wrong with myself. It's not allowing it. Sorry, I know this has been real problems. <laughs> this is real life. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to share it with either of us. We'll yeah. I've just sent I've, it over. Yeah, I've just jumped jumped in. Two seconds. Why am I going full screen? Do, 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 do. More incidental music for you guys. Do, <laughs> do, 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 do. All right, let's have a look. Let's do that. And let's do that. There we go. So hopefully you can all see that. Not quite. No, Not I can't. Quite. Oh. Bloody hell. Excuse my French. Why isn't that sharing? This means an issue with your browser. Please restart it by... Oh, my days. Um, so Savannah, exciting. do you want to try I got this. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> oh. oh, guys, isn't it a Thursday? Perfect. Okay. So let me just hit present here, and then I will get that up. I appreciate all of your patience. We got this, guys. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, totally teamwork in action all the way there, Marcus. Isn't that the truth? Just taking a second to load, of course. Because <laughs> that's what it's going to do to us today. <laughs> It's it's this is the new Halloween webinar from uh, Sendable here. So <laughs> everything goes wrong. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Okay, here we go. All right, everybody can see my screen. Okay. Yay! Nice one. I'll just let you know when to swap the slides um so I know it's all right. um so i'm really conscious of the delay here so i'm so sorry guys and i'll try and be as quick as i can but um i'm ellie and i'm the content writer at sendable not a technology person as you might have guessed um so essentially today we're going to be talking about content pillars and how to scale your content creation workflow so yeah if you want to switch slides um, so today we're going to talk about what co content pillars actually are and why they're useful, uh, especially for agencies or even in-house social media marketers, how you can come up with content pillars for your own brand and brands who have done a great job of coming up with content pillars themselves. So yeah. 
So what are content pillars? If you want to, yeah. Um, so essentially content pillars are themes, topics, buckets, whatever you want to sort of call them. <laughs> essentially, they are these themes that encompass your brand values and um, what your brand stands for. And you can use them to come up with topics for your social media posts. They really help to sort of hone in your content strategy and they there are some real great, great reasons to use them. So if you want to, next slide. So um, examples of content pillars include self-care and well-being advice, company updates, customer testimonials, blog promotion, relatable industry humour and behind the scenes content. So broadly, um, content pillars can be promotional, educational, community-based, entertainment and engagement-based. I like this um, little graphic because it sort of encompasses content pillars really well, I think. So why are they useful for social media marketers? Um, so loads and loads of good reasons, but here are the main ones. They help with organisation. So if you know, you know, you've got five content pillars that you can just reach for, it's going to be incredibly helpful when you come to create posts, because it means you are already organised, you're on the ball, you know what you're going to post about. Whereas when you don't have content pillars, you end up sort of scrabbling for content and not really knowing where to go. And the world is your oyster, which is fantastic, but it also means that you're paralysed by choice. So content pillars really hone in your ideas and they help to structure your content strategy. Um, they also really help Help with speed of content production so as soon as you know what you're posting about you can just get on with it rather than as I was saying before scrabbling around for content ideas and um, just not really having any any sense of pace um, they're also brilliant for bringing consistency to a brand's social media presence so um, People who are sort of prospecting for your company or people who are looking to buy your product might visit your social media channels. And if they can spot those um, consistent themes, those consistent pillars, it's going to help them to sort of get acquainted with your brand and, yeah, just have that sense of consistency. They're going to get to know you better. Finally, um, content pillars can help you produce meaningful content. So when you have certain set pillars that you want to, post about, it's going to help you to really hone in on what's good and what's bad in your content strategy. You can learn what's working, what's not working, and it can just really help you to sort of experiment. So yeah. Um, before you sort of go ahead and create those content pillars, there's always considerations to have in mind. So think about your social media goals and what you really want to achieve on social. There's lots of different things that you might want to achieve, uh, brand awareness, lead generation, community building or sales. But really think about um, like what you want to achieve and how these content pillars can help you achieve it. Um, next, you would want to think about why your business is on social and what value you can bring to your content. Sorry, what value you can bring to your follow followers with pillars. So just really think about the sorts of content that your followers and your prospects might want to see and hone that in, basically. Uh, you might also want to think about your audience. Who is your ideal marketing or buyer persona? So think about what they want to see, um, the sorts of content that resonates with them and produce pillars that are in line with that. Um, and finally, think about the available resources at your disposal. So the recommended number of um, content pillars is about three to seven. So, you know, if you're a smaller business, maybe don't try and make seven or create seven, think about three, think about those small ideas that you can really expand on and think about, um, yeah, just doing as much as you can, but as easily as you can. So next, we've got some tips for generating content pillars for your brand. Um, so as I was sort of saying before, make sure you look at your brand's marketing personas. Um, ask lots of different questions about what they want to see, um, what their target audience or sorry, what your target audience is, is using in terms of platforms. What are they interested in? Think about their values. Think about the topics that they really resonate with and things that are going to make them want to engage and respond. And then think about how your brand social media content can really help them to do that and how can, how can it bring value, really? Once you've got that sort of um, basis with your questions and once you've sort of 
decided who you're who you're marketing to creating content pillars is going to be a lot easier so next a good thing to do when thinking about um creating content pillars for your brand would be to carry out competitive research so competitive research is brilliant for the fact that it can really help you to see your competitors and, and what gaps they have in their posting schedule and their content schedule and how you can sort of exploit those but it's always important to think about how you know you aren't going to want to imitate your competitors you're going to want to have that fresh and original social media presence that everyone's after so you know do a lot of competitive research but don't um don't sort of compare yourself or don't you know imitate them because you want to be original yourself um and yeah in terms of actually carrying out your competitor research a good number to go for is five so make a list of five five of your top competitors and head to their social channels you know really see what you're competing against make note of any posts that are performing performing really well to them and um sort of compare them to what you're doing and the sorts of content that you're putting out at the moment and yeah just identify any gaps in their schedule and you can sort of help to form your content pillars around that um also another great thing to do is to audit your brand's social media channels before you create your pillars. So um, obviously social media audits are brilliant. They help you to spot trends. They help you to sort of stay on the pulse of what your followers are really looking for in terms of content. And you can really see what people are engaging with. And it's really important to just always look inwards and look at your own channels and sort of look at it with without rose tinted glasses really see what is working really be harsh with yourself and say that's really not working how can we improve it and then once you've done your audit you can sort of start to see what types of posts are unsuccessful and just start to phase them out and yeah just be a bit more experimental with your content so some examples of brand content pillars i wanted to give you guys a real sort of insight into what these brands are doing and how easily you can sort of spot what they're what they're up to. So the first uh, category that we have for content pillars is fun consumer products. So um, this is a pretty fantastic thing to be able to promote on social media. Everyone wants a fun consumer product, a beauty product, you know, something that's really easily photographable um, and shareable. So um, an example of a brand that are doing content pillars well would be Sugar Bear Vitamins. I'm sure you've all heard of them. They're, they're crazy on ads and things like that on social. But if you scroll through their grid on Instagram, you'll be able to see plenty of user generated content. Um, so that's one of their pillars, aspirational content, you know, hashtag beauty goals, you'll see that on their um, grid as well. And that's another con content pillar. Also, you'll see beauty kit, uh, tips and you'll see self-care advice. So, you know, there's lots of different content pillars that you can um, get. And the only the best way to sort of approach it is to think what's relevant to your brand. And that's exactly what they've done. So the next sort of um, category of business that has used content pillars or could use content pillars is B2C and B2B service brands. So for this, it would be things like law firms or insurance companies or sort of doctors, surgeries or health companies or anything like that. Um, I've used an example here of Shoe Smith's law firm and I really liked what they they've done here because they've included the faces of their team members. It adds authenticity um, to their social media presence. And I think with these sorts of businesses, it's really important to be open and transparent with who you are because you don't have that sort of e-commerce background. You can't just show how great your product is. You have to really hear about testimonials and you have to really get that um, social proof. So it's brilliant that they've really opened, them, um, opened themselves up and shown who they are. So yeah, customer quotes and testimonials are gonna be great if you're or sort of a law firm um, sharing advice and tips as I said that's authenticity sharing knowledge also industry news and team highlights they're all great um, identifiable content pillars for these sorts of brands 
So next we've got hospitality businesses. Um, again, this is quite an easy one if you're in that line of work because um, everyone loves to go out for food and, it, and you can make food look brilliant, especially on Instagram. But it's all about that sort of food envy and things. So the brand example that I've used is Five Guys. Um, they're really big on Instagram and Twitter. Everybody knows who they are. But um, if you scroll through their channels, you'll really easily be able to see their content pillars. So they do a lot of promo and PR product photos. So, you know, pictures of burgers, because who doesn't want to see that stuff? Um, seasonal specials, so their menus, you know, what they're offering for Halloween, what they're offering for Christmas um, in terms of what people can eat. Also competitions, that's the example I've used here. If you have the resources to run competitions and you can provide prizes, it's always a great uh, content pillar to choose. And then user generated content as well. So that's a big one on, on sort of all types of brands because everyone wants to see how your product can be used. But specifically, if you go on Five Guys um, Instagram, you'll see loads of pictures of their audience and people eating the burgers, which is what people want to see. They want to see that social proof. So um, next we've got an e-commerce clothing business. Um, my example was Never Fully Dressed. They're very big on Instagram again. I'm sure you guys will have heard of them. And um, again, they're a great sort of product to be able to um, sell on social media because it's so visual. You can really see, um, see what you're buying really. So in terms of... Um, their, their sort of content pillars. They have a lot of, um, sort of self-care advice, fashion advice, user-generated content, uh, you know, really seeing how the clothes fit and how people wear them. And, you know, if you had an e-commerce clothing business, potentially you could do a customer care um, uh, content pillar you know you could talk about when your deliveries are likely to come through you can talk about how people should wash your garments that sort of thing and then finally we've got the example of a university um so I picked Hope College here they're obviously a big American college um they do brilliant things and creative things on social media they do lots of campus tours. They um, also, you know, talk through student advice about what, what people should be eating, how they can budget, you know, how they should be living their lives as students. And they're all really great content pillars. They also do a lot of um, student takeovers, especially on Snapchat and Instagram, and also graduation live streams. So they're all just sort of ideas um, of content pillars. And as I say, if you go on any of these companies' feeds, you'll be able to identify them really quickly. So finally, I just wanted to sort of talk you through and give you a peek behind the curtain of what Sendable's um, content pillars are. Um, so I have done a lot of Sendable social media management. So this has been sort of my strategy. And so there you go. I'm in your guys' shoes as well. And I know I know how it is to be a social media manager. So here's what I've worked on. Um, so our content pillars are based around our care or cares values. Um, so they're curiosity, authenticity, reliability and empowerment and basically we sort of strive with our social media presence to add value answer questions and just really demystify the world of social media management um but yeah so with our content pillars you might be able to spot them if you head to our um socials but there are lots of social media marketing tips promotion for our 2021 soon to be 2022 social media holiday calendar and lots of celebratory team content so yeah um there's lovely savannah there with a customer um but yeah so that's pretty much what we sort of work on and how we approach content um pillars so yeah, thank you so much for listening. Um, sorry about all those technical difficulties, but um, we got there in the end and I hope it's been really useful. So thank you. Awesome. It does look like we have a few questions. So uh, I, from far in, we have, what are some tips on conducting a social media audit? So it depends what channel that you're using. We actually have a social media or an Instagram audit template that might be really useful to you. So we could probably pop a link in um, to the- Pete already added that. <laughs> but um, you basically need to start off 
with a lot of the steps I mentioned, you need to look at your competitors, see what they're doing. You need to look at your own channel and see how successful your posts are, see what's working, what's not working. And also look at how you can look to improve with the resources that you have. So, um, you know, look at a di different tools you could start to adopt you know if you don't have a social media um scheduling tool like sendable maybe it's worth it you get one you know if you are only a one-man band and you want to start creating more video content then it's worth looking into lots of different video tools you know premiere pro uh headliner those sorts of things and then maybe if you want to produce graphics you could look at graphic tools like canva so it's very much just about taking an inward look at your own social media presence really and just finding the holes and then patching them up. Awesome. Um, and Adele has asked if we can get the slides available. Yeah, of course. Awesome. So, and we also, of course, you will have the repay link sent as soon as this is over, but we will add the uh, slides as well. And just so you know as well, guys, uh, with what Ali was talking about there, you can cannot kill two birds with one stone um, because Canva is integrated into Sendable, which I'm sure you're aware of. And the latest version of Canva actually adds has improved their video functionality as well. So um, you've got your photo editing and your video editing all inside of Sendable. So if you're not signed up, get on. <laughs> nice plug. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys just a few of the helpful ways that you guys can implement some of these ideas in your own sendable account. So I'm going to share my screen really quick here and just show you just a few different ideas. So first we have the monitor section of sendable. Now this is a great place to carry out some competitor research where you can uh, create a new alert and essentially walk through looking at maybe an analyzing your competitors. Um, you can fill this in. We have an awesome webinar on the keyword monitor section. And so we'll get that dropped in the chat. Just know that this is a great place to start that audit or the competitor research and can be really helpful in getting started. I also wanted to mention our content libraries. Now this is the, the content section of Sendable is an awesome way. You'll just go to content and go to my content. It's an awesome way to create content libraries that are specific to those values and content pillars. So you'll notice that we have our care values over here that I have created libraries for. So I can create content that is around and focused on curiosity and really uh, kind of leaning hard into that subject so that I can already have kind of my juices flowing when I work on my social media posts. So just know that you can uh, kind of implement some of these strategies here uh, straight from your sendable content libraries. Next, we also have our reports area. Now, Obviously, an internal audit, some of the best ways to do that is to actually analyze the data that's coming in on your account. So just know that you have Sendable's quick reports, you all, which will be attached to uh, the different social media uh, profiles that you've added. You can also create a custom report that can include kind of multiple platforms um, and really see kind of the brand at large. But just know you guys have these areas of the dashboard to check out and to really implement to make sure that uh, you're analyzing your content and seeing if it works and then pivoting and making sure that as, it, uh, as you analyze it, it really is the best fit for your audience. So just know we have our, we're dropping our webinars here, both the monitoring, our deep dive in the content library, as well as our deep dive on reporting. Also, we, like did, we have we... one more question that came in. Yeah, that's from Liz. Awesome question, by the way, Liz. Um, Ellie, do you feel you should keep a monthly schedule with the same pillars or can it vary as far as time post and month to month and do you change your pillars up every month? You know, how frequent, what's the frequency of those changing that stuff up? So for us personally, um, we tend to have a, a year's worth of schedule really, or a, a year's content plan. And then 
we would keep those pillars the same. But I think now that you've mentioned it, it's probably a really good idea to keep um, on top of them and to keep checking whether or not they're working and, you know, whether or not you um, think that the content's going in the right direction. So actually maybe a sort of quarterly checking could be really good. Hmm. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Um, oh, there's Savannah coming back there. I don't know where, don't know where she went, but she, she came back and joined us again. Um, that's awesome. Thanks, Ellie. Um, yeah, um, I, I don't know if there are any other questions. I can't see any other questions. Um, oh, great right. advice from Adele. So there we go. Amazing advice from Cecilia. So there we go as well. So happy days. Last chance for questions, guys. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ellie, Pete. Thank you, everyone in the audience for your patience today. I appreciate it. We certainly enjoyed getting to spend our Thursday with you. Uh, join us next week. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Cheers, Thanks, guys. everybody. Bye. Bye.